I'm here on behalf of Nellis to introduce you to the ValveCon ADC Series Electric Actuator. The ADC Series consists of two different sized enclosures that cover different torque output ranges. Model codes that start with ADC indicate the standard enclosure and torque output in the 150 to 600 inch pound range. And LADC designates this larger enclosure for torque output in the range of 1,000 to 3,000 inch pounds. In either case, the actuator includes the ADC series universal control board. The board will accept various voltage inputs and various methods for on off and positioning control, as well as an optional battery backup feature, which allows for driving to a designated position upon loss of electrical power. The ADC series actuators without battery backup are identified in the model code by U, U1, U3, or similar. Actuators with the optional lithium ion battery pack are identified in the model code by UB, UB1, or similar. Alternatively, model codes that contain UL2, UL3, or similar indicate the presence of a sealed lead acid battery. The model codes also indicate the standard 90 degree operation or the optional 180 degree or 270 degree operation. Please consult your model number and the how to order section of the product manual for additional information. The universal control board is color coded to simplify wiring and setup. The main input wiring terminals are shown here in orange. The on-off control wiring terminals are shown here in dark green. The position control section is shown here in yellow. The board includes the familiar ValveCon set and go calibration user interface with our slide switches, push buttons, and selection potentiometers. The board can be configured for either two wire or three wire on-off control. And as you can see, the on-off section is the same dark green color as the wiring terminals. Now the position control section, which is the same yellow color as the control input terminals, allows for using 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts DC analog or a resistive control signal, such as 0 to 135 ohms. The actuator accepts either 115 or 230 volts AC as the main input power. Voltage must be supplied to the universal control board at terminals A and B. The board also accepts 24 volts AC as the main input power. Voltage must be supplied to terminals 17 and 18. And finally, the board accepts 12 or 24 volts DC as the main input power. Voltage must be supplied to terminals 19 and 20. The board accepts high voltage on-off control wiring, such as 115 or 230 volts AC at terminal C through F on the universal control board. Note, if using one of the two wire modes, only one AC line one or hot will be used. To control the actuator with low voltage on-off control wiring, such as 12 or 24 volts DC, or 24 volts AC. Control power will connect to terminals 8 through 11 on the universal control board. Again note, if using a two-wire mode, only one control hot or positive is used. The on-off control modes allow the actuator to drive in a desired direction in response to the application of a control power. The different modes are as follows. In the two-wire CCW mode, the actuator will default to the clockwise position when only the main actuator power is present. The actuator will drive counterclockwise when the CCW control power is energized. Now in two-wire CW mode, the actuator will default to the counterclockwise position when only the main actuator power is present. And the actuator will drive clockwise when the CW control power is energized. In three-wire jog mode, the actuator will drive counterclockwise when the CCW control power is energized and will drive clockwise when the CW control power is energized. Now, if control power is removed mid-travel, the actuator will stop in position. When the mid-control power is energized, the actuator will drive to the programmed mid-position 
The mid position is optional and can be set anywhere inside of the clockwise and counterclockwise end of travel position settings to provide a three position, center off, or a dribble feed position. In three wire latch mode, the actuator will drive counterclockwise when the CCW control power is momentarily energized and will drive clockwise when the CW control power is momentarily energized. The signal is latched after momentary application. If control power is removed mid-travel, the actuator will continue to drive in the last energized direction. The mid-control terminal is ignored in three-wire latch mode. Alternatively, the actuator can be configured for position control mode. Position control mode allows the actuator to modulate or change position in response to a change in an analog or resistive control signal. The actuator accepts either a 4 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 10 volt DC analog signal, or it can accept a resistive signal, such as 0 to 135 ohms. To use 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts DC, select analog in the position control region of the mode selector. The input control signal connects to terminals 15 and 16. To control the actuator with a resistance signal such as 0 to 135 ohms, first select resistive in the position control region of the mode selector. The resistance signal will connect to terminals 12 through 14 on the universal control board. The board will respond to resistance signals up to 10k ohms. The minimum span signal is 100 ohms. Now that that's settled, we can discuss the wiring for end of travel indication, signal feedback, and some other standard and optional features. ADC series actuators are equipped with two auxiliary switches for end of travel indication. They are wired to terminals G through L on the universal control board. The unit is also equipped with 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts DC position feedback as a standard feature. The feedback signal can be generated internally, or it can be loop-powered as desired. The feedback signal is wired to terminals 5, 6, and 7. ADC series actuators are equipped with a heater thermostat option that is user-enabled by sliding a selector switch. Slide the selector all the way up to select humid mode. This will keep the actuator internals warmer and drier in a humid environment or an environment that experiences wide temperature swings. Slide the selector to the middle position to select the low temp mode. This will keep the actuator internals warmer in a cold environment, but will turn the heater off above approximately 60 degrees Fahrenheit or about 15 degrees Celsius. Finally, the heater can be turned off completely by sliding the selector all the way down. The ADC series actuator includes a motor stall feature that will disconnect voltage from the motor as a means of protecting the motor should a stall condition be present. This could be due to an overload situation at the actuator output, which would cause an immediate stall, or due to some other issue, in which case the motor would attempt to drive in the commanded direction for five seconds prior to stall activation. There is a red motor stall LED on the board that will light if a stall condition is present. The board also includes a power status output that can be monitored remotely. This confirms the power is reaching the low voltage side of the universal control board. Additionally, if the unit encounters a motor stall, the output will alternate between on and off to provide the stall indication remotely. There's also a power consumption feature, which includes normal and energy save modes. Normal mode, up on the selector switch, is selected by default prior to shipment. Energy save mode, down on the selector switch, can be useful in remote solar applications, reducing continuous power consumption dramatically by allowing on-off configured units to enter a doze mode when the motor is not driving. And if equipped with a backup battery, the board can be configured to drive to the full clockwise position, to a mid position, or to the full counterclockwise position upon loss of power. This is selected by turning a potentiometer here. The board can park, meaning drive to the fail position immediately upon loss of power, or it can continue to cycle in response to a control signal in the multi-mode. 
The internal battery is charged by the board as needed while working to maintain optimal battery health. Charging status is seen here and can also be monitored remotely through the likes of the optional Modbus board. When equipped with a battery, the system runs an automatic load test weekly to assess the battery's state of health. The battery status indicator will let the user know if the battery's state of health is questionable and that maintenance may be required. The goal being to ensure that the battery has the power needed to drive the actuator to the fail position should a power loss occur. And finally, the ADC Series actuator can include an optional Modbus board for control and or diagnostic information. The board simply plugs into the main board and uses standard RS-485 two-wire communications protocol. Thank you for your attention. And if you already have an ADC Series electric actuator and would like to learn more about how to set it up, please view our setup and calibration video. Additionally, if you have any further questions about the ADC Series or any of our other products, please feel free to visit our website.